How's it going everybody? In today's video, I wanted to show you a Docker setup that I came across recently that I absolutely have been loving for my local WordPress development. So it comes with a lot of stuff and it's really nifty. So I wanted to share it with you guys and hopefully you can get some use out of it. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. Before we get too far ahead, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm launching a free intermediate WordPress development course in January of 2020. So if you want to be the first one to know about it when it drops, uh, head over to WPCast.tv, type in your email, and you will be the first to know. Um, I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me, so this is a little way of saying thank you from me to you, but hope you enjoy it when it comes out. <laughs> but thanks guys, I appreciate you watching, and back to the video. All right, so there's gonna be two prerequisites to getting this up and running. First and foremost, you're gonna to have to have Docker. Goodness gracious, you should be using Docker if you aren't already. Just go to their website, you sign in, it's free, you download Docker on your Mac, and then all of a sudden you have Docker. Um, you're, the other thing that you're going to need is if you have Homebrew installed, you're gonna to need to install OpenSSL. So um, you can just do that by typing in brew install OpenSSL in your command line. So after that, you are caught up to where I am right now and we are going to get this up and running. So as you can probably tell, this is not my Docker container. I came across this when I was looking into Docker and WordPress and how to kind of get a really good environment set up. And I'm always the kind of person that if if somebody's already done it right, then just why not do it? You can reverse engineer it later, you can add to it later, but first just get yourself up and running rather than doing everything from scratch. And that's exactly what this uh, Docker container has done for me, and I'm really stoked about it. So, couple features that I wanna point out before we actually download it and get it up and running. So it does, it has a couple different uh, scripts that you can run and it gets you an SSL certificate. It lets you trust that SSL certificate and then get a custom domain for your local environment. So those three things alone were top priority on my list. So having an SSL certificate, having a custom domain for my local development and being able to trust a certificate just makes it so much nicer when you're working locally. The other thing that this one does is that it's on Nginx, which, you know, yeah, that's great uh, little plus there. But the other thing is that it's using Bedrock, and I love Bedrock. If you've watched my other video, which I will put a link to above right now, um, it's my favorite way of working with WordPress because you're using uh, the Composer and all that kind of stuff to manage your plugins and themes. So. I absolutely love it, and that's really why I wanted to share this with you guys. I'm actually having it forked right now, and I'm working on it on the side for my personal use. But this is a great starting point if you're just getting new uh, into Docker and, and WordPress and all that kind of stuff. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a good choice for you. So what we're gonna do is we are just going to download this. So we're gonna download the zip, and we are just going to drag it onto my desktop here. Nothing more complicated than that. So once we have, here, let me actually drag this away. Uh, we're just gonna double click into it. We got a new folder, and I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. And we are going to do a few things together so you can actually see how all of this works. So we've got my file tree off here to the right. We've got my terminal down here at the bottom left. And let's just close some of these guys out. And we're good to go. You're gonna be right where I'm, I'm, I'm at. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to run the scripts that are inside of this CLI. We're going to create an SSL certificate. We're going to then trust that SSL certificate so no errors pop up when we try and visit our URL in Chrome. And then we are going to set up the host file. That's what's actually going to give us our URL. But before we actually do that, we need to do a couple finding and replacings because we don't want what's default here. If we open up our uh, Docker file, or not our Docker file, our Nginx folder, we have our Nginx conf. If you're not familiar with this, don't worry about it because I barely know what's going on in here. But 
what you're going to find is you're going to see my app dot local referenced everywhere inside of this, uh, this whole project. So we want to make sure that we are have our custom domain. So I'm going to set it to something different. So I'm just going to find and replace my app.local with my test.local, just so we know that we can change this and we can find and replace everything in here. So let's find and replace everything inside of this project. I'm going to save all the files and let's make sure we got them all set up host file and then i'm going to close them all so now we should have everything changed from my app to my test so i'm going to open this up and we've got my test.local here and it's all been changed hooray so what we're going to do now is i'm going to open up the terminal and we should be right inside of our project root here and i'm going to change my directory into the cli that way we can start running these commands. And so you can just do dot slash, and then we're going to do create cert dot sh. And then you just hit enter, and then it's going to generate the key for you. How about that? Make sure you have uh, open SSL installed because that's how it does it. And now all of a sudden we have a certs folder here. So now we have my test dot local CRT and key. So everything according to plan. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do dot slash and then we're going to do trust cert. So that's going to ask you for your computer's password and then it's going to trust the certificate on both Chrome and Safari. It gives you a nice little warning here that Firefox has its own keychain manager so it can't do that automatically for you. Um, and then after we've done that, we can run the setup hosts file. So when we do that, it's going to ask us a name and we're going to do my test dot local because that is the name of our local server here that we changed um, or the local domain that we want to use. And then it's gonna say, do you want to add or remove that to the host file? And we're going to do A for add. And then it says that it was added successfully. So, so far so good. Next, we want to do a couple things here. We want to go over to um, our source directory and we want to check out our composer JSON because composer JSON is what it's gonna, is it's gonna has, house our WordPress installation and all that. So let's just make sure everything is looking good in here. It's going to install um, WordPress. It's gonna install the other two uh, um, plugins that Roots gives you. So everything's looking good here. And let's just run uh, Composer install. So we're gonna go CD, and you know, let's just clear it out so we can get back up to the top. We're gonna go CD dot dot slash, and so now we're back at the root. Um, and then we need to go into source. That's where we need to go. And then we're gonna run Composer install. So it's gonna load all mine from cache because I did this earlier just to make sure everything was kosher. So super quick there and we're all good. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we just need to run docker compose dash uh, up dash D. So that's going to take our docker compose file that we have been given here by the, um, oh, did we forget something? Yes, we did. Inside of docker compose, we're just going to change everything from my app to my test. It didn't catch it because it doesn't have, or our find and replace didn't catch it because it doesn't have dot local at the end of it. So we're just gonna save that. And then now we're gonna run composer docker dash compose space up space dash D. And so that's going to check this file. It's gonna run everything and it's gonna um, start up all the servers. And then it's going to run it in detached mode, which is that dash D. So it's not going to clog up our terminal here. The other thing that we're going to need to do is we're now going to need to take this .env file and that houses our information about our database. So we need to change that from the example file and we're just going to leave it .env. So when you're installing WordPress, um, usually you have to change wp-config-sample to just wp-config, same idea here. And then we're just gonna change the database from my app to my test. And that should be good to go. Um, let's just double check here real quick. And I'm gonna pull this up. 
https colon slash slash my test dot local. Let's bring that over here. You guys can check it out. And now we get our installation screen. Awesome. So then we can just go in here. We can, you know, my test, Alex, Alex, of course, Alex at WPcast.tv. Discourage all those search engines that are calling my local host. And then we're just going to have it install WordPress like normal. And pretty much that's all she wrote. Like, and all things considered, we now have an Nginx, you know, server up. We now have WordPress up and running. We have a SSL certificate and it's trusted. It's, it's so dang easy. That's why I love it. And, um, I, like I said, I've got this forked, so I'm working on a separate version cause I'm going to install like Redis and all this other stuff on top of it. Um, and I'll release that when I'm done with it too. No reason to keep it to myself, but Hopefully this is something that is useful for you. Hopefully that you can uh, use it on a, on a project. Like I said, it's free. It's easy to set up. Just follow these instructions and you're good to go. Anyway, guys, thanks for the support. I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.